Welcome to UK Times, your trusted source for vital financial insights and news updates. Attention all Brits! In our latest video, we uncover a startling truth. Thousands of individuals across the UK could be missing out on a potential £400 every month. Join us as we delve into the details of this overlooked opportunity, offering essential guidance on how you could claim what's rightfully yours. Don't let this slip through your fingers hit that follow button for more valuable updates, give us a like if you're ready to seize the opportunity, and share your thoughts in the comments below. Let's make sure everyone gets what they deserve. Subscribe now to UK Times for all the latest financial insights. Older people could be missing out on a benefit worth up to £101 a week for people who need extra care. The attendance allowance is a cash boost for people of state pension age who need help because of an illness, disability or mental health condition. Claimants of the Department for Work and Pensions DWP, benefit get paid either £272.40 or £407 every four weeks depending on their circumstances. This works out as either £68.10 or £101.75 a week in support for people who receive extra care and support. The money can help balance your budget in a variety of ways and does not have to be spent exclusively on care, in an effort to help older people remain independent for longer. Attendance allowance is tax-free and claiming it will not affect your ability to claim other state benefits. Report the daily record. The latest numbers from the DWP show that in August 2023, there were 1,525,421 people across Great Britain getting the benefit. The charity Independent Age has created a fact sheet to help new claimants through the application process, alongside seven top tips for filling in the form. Tips for filling in attendance allowance application form. Independent Age says, the decision maker will use your claim form to work out whether you qualify for attendance allowance, so it's important to give as much detail as possible. They advise anyone completing the form to explain how your condition affects your day-to-day -day life and what personal tasks you have difficulties with. Answer all the questions if you can and give examples. Include the time it takes you to carry out specific tasks and how much help you need with them even if there's no one to help you. Explain how your needs change and how bad your difficulties can be if some days are better than others. Mention any things you avoid doing because they're difficult for you for example, if it's difficult bending and reaching to put on and take off socks. Even while you're sitting down, explain what happens when they don't You can find more help and advice on the Independent Age website here or by calling them at 0800-19-6789. Here's a quick guide to the benefit to see if you or someone in your family should apply. What is attendance allowance? Attendance allowance helps with extra costs if you have a disability, physical or mental health condition, or illness severe enough that it makes it hard for you to look after yourself it does not cover mobility needs. You don't need to have someone caring for you to apply. Who can claim? You should apply for attendance allowance if you have a disability or illness and need help or supervision throughout the day or at times during the night even if you don't currently get that help. This might include help with your personal care for example getting dressed, eating or drinking, getting in and out of bed, bathing or showering and going to the toilet, help to stay safe. You should also apply if you have trouble with personal tasks, like if they take a long time, cause you pain or you need physical help, like a chair to lean on. Attendance allowance isn't just for people with a physical disability or illness. You should also claim if you need help or supervision throughout the day or night and have a mental health condition, learning difficulties, a sensory condition if you are deaf or visually impaired. Attendance allowance main disabling conditions. The Department for Work and Pensions DWP, records medical conditions on their attendance allowance computer system and reports on the main disabling condition when more than one is present. This list isn't a checklist for claiming attendance allowance, but it's meant to help people understand what type of conditions are being supported. If you need extra support during the day or night because of a long-term illness, disability or health condition, you should check out the official eligibility guidance on the Government UK website. Arthritis, spondylosis, back pain, disease of the muscles, bones or joints, trauma to limbs, visual disorders and diseases, hearing disorders, heart disease, 
respiratory disorders and diseases, asthma, cystic fibrosis, cerebrovascular disease, peripheral vascular disease, epilepsy, neurological diseases, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, motor neurone disease, chronic pain syndromes, diabetes mellitus, metabolic disease, traumatic paraplegia, tetraplegia, major trauma other than traumatic paraplegia, tetraplegia, learning difficulties, psychosis, psychoneurosis, personality disorder, dementia, behavioral disorder, alcohol and drug abuse, hyperkinetic syndrome, renal disorders, inflammatory bowel disease, bowel and stomach disease, blood disorders, hemophilia, multi-system disorders, multiple allergy syndrome, skin disease, malignant disease, severely mentally impaired, double amputee, deaf, blind, hemodialysis, frailty, total parental nutrition, AIDS, infectious diseases, viral disease, coronavirus, COVID-19. Attendance allowance also supports 43,295 people with a terminal illness. How much could I claim on attendance allowance? You could receive £68.10 if you need help during the day or at night or £101.75 if you need help both during the day and at night, or if you're terminally ill. The benefit is paid every four weeks, which means you could receive either £272.40 or £407 every pay period. You can spend the money however you like, and it could help you stay independent in your own home for longer. This might include paying for taxis, helping towards bills, or paying for a cleaner or gardener. From April 8, people claiming attendance allowance will see their weekly payments increase by 6.7%. This means they'll get either £72.65, lower rate, or £108.55, higher rate, each week. Over the financial year 2024-25, this adds up to a total of £5,644.60. Can I claim attendance allowance if I have savings and other income? Yes, you can. Attendance allowance isn't based on your other income or savings there's no limit. Plus, it's tax-free and not included in the benefit cap, so it won't reduce any other benefits you get. Will attendance allowance affect my state pension? No, it won't. You can even claim attendance allowance if you're still working and earning money. How does attendance allowance affect other benefits? If you get attendance allowance, some of your other benefits might go up. These could include Extra pension credit Housing benefit reduction Council tax reduction How do I make a claim? To apply for attendance allowance, you need to fill in a long form. It might seem hard at first, but you can get help from your local citizen's advice. Don't let the form stop you from applying. If you want to do it yourself, you can follow the citizen's advice guide on how to fill in your claim form. You can find out how to get the application form by post or over the phone on the Government UK website. What should I do if I'm nearing the state pension age? If you're considering applying for attendance allowance as you approach the state pension age, it might be more beneficial to claim personal independence payment PIP, immediately you could receive a higher amount. Who is not eligible for attendance allowance? You won't qualify for attendance allowance if you're already receiving PIP or Disability Living Allowance DLA, to cover your care costs. If you apply for attendance allowance while getting DLA, the Department for Work and Pensions DWP, will typically reassess your DLA award instead. You can renew your PIP or DLA when the current award ends, provided you still meet the eligibility requirements. If your renewal is unsuccessful, you can then apply for attendance allowance. Thanks for watching this video. Hopefully this video will be helpful for you. Please subscribe our channel for more interesting videos. And please don't forget like, share and comment.